it's probably just you. Test, test. Um, have a call to order. Everybody, please join me with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. <coughs> Roll call. <clears throat> Mr. Blaze? Here. Uh, Ms. Torrens? Here. Um, Mr. Crockett? Here. Mr. Hebert? Here. Ms. Shoup? Here. Thank you. Uh, do I have a motion? Has everybody had a chance to review the meeting minutes from last month? And I'll, make, so? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of July 11th, 2018 as printed. Is there a second? I'll second. All those in favor? It's unanimous. All right. Next matter is approval of the draft written decision for appeals heard on July 11th, 2018. Appeal number 2639 for John Murphy. Has everybody had a chance to read the findings of fact and everything on that appeal? Yes. Are there any questions or comments from that? No. Do I have a motion? Make a motion to uh, approve appeal number 2639 as printed. For the findings of fact. Written decision, excuse me. I'll second. All those in favor? I'm just abstaining. You guys? Since I wasn't here. see you. You get in favor? Yeah. Okay, yeah. It's unanimous. Appeal number 2640, John S. Kelso, 1995, Revocable Trust. Patricia Nutting, trustee. So everybody had a chance to review the findings of facts on this? Yes. Yes. Are there any questions or additional comments? Is there a motion? I'll move to approve the decision on appeal number 2640 and the findings of fact. Second. All those in favor? It's unanimous. One abstain on both of those. All right, we'll go right into a six-month extension request by Dominique Fortier for Appeal 2625, Limited Reduction of Yard Size, 8 Morning Street, approved February 14, 2018. Yes. I couldn't find that. 
Yeah. Did we have a uh, copy of the letter? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Oh, yeah. yeah it's slow. On behalf of our client, Dominic Fortier of 8 Morning Street, we're requesting an extension of the limited reduction of yard size variance appeal number 2625 that was granted on February 15th, 2018. The process of refining the design to meet the project budget and select a contractor has taken longer, longer than expected and will exceed the six months time frame noted as part of the variance. Thank you for your time and consideration of this extension. Our current expectation is that work will commence in September. We wouldn't have anything coming in on this right from anybody. I have a motion. I'll move to approve the extension as presented. Second. Second. All those in favor? It's unanimous. <coughs> okay, moving into our appeals. Appeal number 2641, limited reduction of yard size, request by James Holston, 22 Burnham Wood Circle, Assessor's Map R68, parcel 96. Is anybody here representing? Please take the podium and let us know who you are and your address, please. Good evening, I'm James Holston, 22 Burnham Wood Circle, Scarborough. This is my wife, Nancy. And this is our uh, neighbor, Lynn Haru, who's the abutter on the, the line in question for the uh, sideline reduction. Okay. Do you folks need to in be introduced at all at the podium, or are you good? I'm good. Okay. Mr. Longstaff, do you have any staff comments or an introduction to this appeal? Uh, sure. This is uh, pretty much a standard limited reduction of yard size. The property is eligible for it. Um, home was built in 1990. Um, your package should include, the application included a certificate of occupancy dated, uh, I believe it was June 1990. I might be wrong on that, but it was 1990 for sure. Um, it's in the R2 zone, um, requiring 40-foot uh, front yard setbacks. The lot is somewhat unique in the fact that it has a frontage that curves um, pretty much from sideline to sideline. Uh, and the positioning of the house um, is such that any addition on the sides of the house that the applicant is proposing would most likely um, encroach into that 15-foot side setback since it's the, uh, as you can see, the corner of the house is only 21 feet uh, roughly from the property line. Great. Anything further you'd like to add that Mr. Longstaff didn't to what you're trying to do? Uh, maybe just a couple of comments. Sure. Uh, I have a, from the town office file when the building permit for the home was, was issued, a plot plan. And I did see this at one point, I think it was probably at the house closing. And it differs significantly from what you see on the, on the current survey because during construction, and Lynn, our neighbor, can vouch for this, they encountered a ledge and, and had to shift the home. So the setback that I thought we actually had wasn't what we really had once we started digging into this. There was a pin missing, so we couldn't exactly identify where the line was. So I had a survey done to locate the pin. And then we did the measurements, we realized, oh, this is only 21 feet, it's not 32 feet as we, we thought it was. Uh, so that's why we, we applied for the, uh, for the reduction. Okay. We'll go down through the questions. You can give us your answers as we go down. Sure. Through. The existing building or structure on the lot for which the limited reduction of yard size is requested were not erected prior to Ju July 3rd, 1991, or the lot is a vacant, non-conforming lot of record. So the occupancy permit was issued, uh, hang on a second, it was in the packet. I believe it was 19, 1990. Mm -hmm. Yeah, June 20th, 1990. 1990? Yeah, June 20th, 1990 is when the occupancy permit was issued. All right. The requested reduction is reasonably necessary to permit the owner or occupant of the property to use and enjoy the property in essentially the same manner as other similar properties are utilized in the zoning district. So we purchased this home in 2011. We've been in the process of uh, kind of setting it up for our retirement needs. We've done a lot of uh, renovations to the home. And this addition, well, which you can see on the picture up there, uh, is for a, uh, a small wood shop. I'm a, I'm a hobby woodworker, do a lot of different types of things. And then Nancy uh, has a sewing and craft uh, hobby. 
So this is just to allow us the room to, uh, to be able to enjoy those hobbies during our retirement years. No business. No business. Conducted out of the residence? No. Due to the physical features of the lot and or the location of existing structures on the lot, it would not be practical to construct the proposed expansion, enlargement, or new structure in conformance with the currently applicable yard size requirements. From, from a practicality point of view, I've, uh, I've met with several contractors uh, to discuss different options. You can kind of see it on the, on the picture behind you. Um, the fact that the ledge was encountered during the construction, uh, actually Lynn's house next door is totally on a slab for that reason. So it's, it's, uh, there's a lot of unknowns if we started, uh, started digging in the ground. So an extension of the, of the garage slab, and you can see it in the picture that uh, just kind of the, the white block diagram it just kind of coming back that way, having the uh, wood shop attached to the garage makes a lot of sense. Uh, you know, sometimes you got to do big assemblies or whatnot, you, you want to use the garage space as well. Uh, so we, we didn't think it was uh, very uh, practical to consider an extension on any other part of the home and the way that, the way that it's been shifted and then the, the problems with the ledge that were uh, discovered during the construction. Okay. The applicant has not commenced construction of the enlargement expansion building or structure for which the limited reduction in yard size is requested so that the Board of Appeals is not considering after the fact application. Nothing has been started. It's planning stages, we had the survey done to determine where the line was and the sketches that, you, that I submitted are the details that, that uh, we've put together so far but there's nothing been started, no building permits applied for or anything. You didn't dig into any ground when you were no. anticipating or seeing no. the ledge? No. All right, great. Are there any letters? Did you skip some questions? I think we skipped number four. Could I skip? Oh, yeah. Sorry, I did. Thank you. <laughs> you the, impacts, the, end real quick. Yeah. <laughs> the impacts or effects of the enlargement expansion or new building or structure on existing uses in the neighborhood will be substantially different from or greater than the impacts and effects of buildings or structures which conform to the yard size requirement. I guess I need to put these on, huh? Uh, Please. I think I have to look that. Which question is that? Number four. Eight? Number four. Yeah, I jumped over one, sorry. Existing uses in the neighborhood. Two. I jumped over two, yes. Uh, not be different or greater. How did I do that? Okay. Due to the physical features of the lot or location of existing structures on the lot, it would not be practical to construct the proposed expansion, enlargement, or new structure in conformance with the currently applicable yard size requirements. That was number three, so I jumped over a couple of them. Okay. Uh, so I think I answered that question you about did. the problems yeah. with, the, with the ledge. Yeah, and, that's and probably why I jumped over it. Why this made the most sense. Okay. Uh, and number four. Yes. Uh, with the uh, impacts and effects of the enlargement, expansion, or new building structure on the existing uses in the neighborhood will not be substantially different. I don't see any issue there. And as far as uh, effects of building or structure, the impacts, one of the things... Uh, Brian, if you could put the, that uh, previous slide up that had the, had the pictures. <clears throat> One of the things I thought might be important, if you could go down to the bottom. I grabbed that off of, off of Google Earth, and the number 22 is, that's our home there, and then number 26 is, is Lynn's home. And even though this is going to uh, uh, come, uh, you know, about 11, 10 and a half feet from, from the line, uh, you know, there's currently a 71 foot distance between the structures, and I think this might be looked at differently if, if her home is right up on, you know, 15 feet off the line, and we're coming back, and you know, there's not a lot of distance between the structures, but there's a, there's a fair amount of distance. And actually, if you scroll back up, Brian, is uh, you can see the picture on the right. The, 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 the piece on the left is where the home would be extended. And you can see Lynn's home quite a distance away. So this isn't like these these are going to be, you know, butting right up against each other on this property line. Okay, thank you. Do we have any letters on this? No. Did you want to make any comments as a neighbor? I'm absolutely fine. I have no problem whatsoever. Okay. <coughs> any questions from the board? Oh, actually open it up to the public hearing to see if anybody wants to speak. Had one neighbor not wanting to speak, so we'll close the public hearing. Any questions of the board? 
Uh, I mean, in kind of regards to, you know, enjoying the property in the same manner as other similar properties in the neighborhood, what do the other properties in your neighborhood look like? Are they bigger, like square footage wise? I'm just kind of curious, you're adding more square footage to a house that, what is the square footage now? Uh, just give me one second, I'll look that up on the, on the print that I sent. Okay, the existing structure, the, the uh, without the addition, it's 1,564 square feet. That's, that's the, the footprint, and the addition is 572, so that would bring it to 2,136. A uh, house across the street from us is probably 4,000 square feet, 3,500. Uh, it's kind of a mix in the neighborhood. Yeah. I'd say, uh, you know, this is a, a, a tr kind of a tri-level house with, you know, like a half a basement and then uh, an upper living area and then a third level, uh, which is what's over the garage. But, uh, Len, how, how many square feet is your house? 2,000? 1,800. 1,800? Okay. Um, but there's other colonial-style homes in the neighborhood that are probably, you know, 3,000, 3,200 square feet. Any other questions? No. Okay, moving in, go through the question for finding facts. Number one, the existing building or structure on the lot for which was the limited reduction of yard sizes requested were erected prior to July 3rd, 1991, or the lot is a vacant non-conforming lot for record. we we'll just start at the end down here. Uh, the applicant has provided the occupancy permit, which is clearly shown that this is accurate. Uh, yep, yeah, I can concur that the date of issue of the certificate of occupancy is as the applicant stated June 20th, 1990. I'm in agreement. I'm in agreement. Yeah, it's pretty straightforward. I mean, we've got everything in front of us that shows that they have that. All in favor, one being met. It's unanimous. The requested reduction is reasonably necessary to permit the owner occupant of the property to use and enjoy the property in essentially the same manner as other similar properties are utilized in the zoning district. Stop back down here. I mean, reasonably necessary. I mean, try to use that kind of loosely, I guess, when you compare your house to the other ones in the neighborhood. I'm not familiar with the neighborhood, but I believe you. I've heard of the street, that the house, some, house, some are bigger, some are smaller. Um, go back and forth with that. But I mean, I think you're totally entitled to, to enjoy your house the same way that other people are with the same amount of size. I would agree. Um, as indicated, the applicant stated that the current square footage of the house, approximately 1,564 square feet. The neighbor is 1,800 square feet, and there are other homes in there between three and 4,000 square feet. Um, I don't really see an issue with uh, this applicant looking just to enjoy the home and increasing it in size to a similar size to other houses in the neighborhood. No, I, I believe that the improvements are actually going to make it more consistent with the other new homes in the neighborhood. I agree with the applicant's uh, answer to the question. Uh, yeah, it's the only way that they can do this. So, I mean, if they hadn't encountered some of the things that they encountered with the ledge and the sizing, I mean, you folks thought that you had the room and things to start up with and found out that you didn't, so you made the proper steps rather than doing something on your own. And, we always appreciate that a little bit more than coming before us after the fact. All in favor of two being met. Ed, in favor? Yeah. Okay. It's unanimous. Due to the physical features of the lot and or location of existing structures on a lot, it would be not practical to construct the proposed expansion, enlargement, or new structure in conformance with the currently applicable yard size requirements. Down the end. Right. Uh, I think the applicant has spoken about the ledge. I think maybe for me it's a little unclear where exactly the ledge is. I'm sure it's documented here and shown, but I think that kind of limits you pretty much to what you're trying to work with and work within that, so that seems fine. I would agree, and uh, the fact that the applicant stated that the current plan, plot plan uh, issued by the, um, issued with the building permit indicated that the house wasn't in the current position that it was when it was constructed which I think is valuable to know because as a, as a buyer going in, you trust the documentation that's provided to you. And if the house says it's an XYZ spot, 
by a, by a plan, ideally it should be there. Never. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, at, I've seen many times where the files that are on record with the, the towns are, are just wrong and that's, it's, it's understandable how that happens. And um, so we usually, you know, I'm a real estate broker, we usually advise people to seek this kind of research and get that done before buying a house. But, um, and, and I think it is unclear whether or not there is ledge in the right places that we're talking about, but I think this is a reasonable expectation that you're going to encounter some topography challenges. And um, it seems like this is probably also the most likely um, way to add on to your house without compromising the architecture and the and working within the topography challenges. So uh, we've we've already closed the public hearing. Sorry. Um, the shape of the lot is weird to begin with. It really doesn't have any place to expand other yeah. than to the sides. So uh, I'm perfectly in agreement with what they're doing here. Did you say you had someone come in that had done a new survey to locate everything for you? Yes, yeah, so I used Sebago Technics. Okay. Uh, and the survey was completed uh, back in the middle of June. And did they have any recommendations or, or think that anything was be better for you based upon possible ledge or anything? Did they even go into that? No. Okay. It was really just to identify the sideline accurately. Because right, there was a missing pin, so they placed the pin and then put some markers in. You can see it in the diagram on, thank on you. the screen. All in favor of three being met? Unanimous. Four, the impacts and effects of the enlargement, expansion, or new building or structure on existing uses in the neighborhood will not be substantially different from or greater than the impacts and effects of a building or structure which conforms to the yard size requirement. So the applicant provided a picture and you nicely answered my questions regarding the neighborhood and the surrounding properties, and so I think you've met this. I would agree, and uh, I'll, I'll piggyback on Melinda's previous comment of how, you know, there's only one way for you to really feasibly expand this house, and it's to the sides. So I agree. I agree. Yeah, I, I agree as well. Yeah, and I mean, the pictures help. It looks like it's more a little bit sheltered from the other neighborhood and you're doing it under the back so it's not something that's going to stick out in the front or stick out on the side of someone's property. We've had people come in before that say they lose sunlight and stuff. We can't really consider that but it looks like you made some steps to actually take care of these things which is good. Mr. Chair, can I add one more comment? Sure. Um, I'll also note that in the application that um, the applicants indicated that both the abutter who's present and has voice support for the uh, uh, addition and the homeowners association president a vote approved of the proposed addition. Okay. All those in favor of four being met. It's unanimous. Five, the applicant has not commenced construction or enlargement expansion building or structure for which the limited reduction <coughs> yard size is requested. So the Board of Appeals is not considering after the fact application. The applicant has testified that he has not begun construction and I will take that. Okay. Brian verifies this, so I'm in agreement with this as well. I'll, I'll accept that. I'm fine. I asked the question point blank, and you said no, so I revert back to that answer. All in favor, five being met. It's unanimous. Do we need to go over B, C, or B, Mr. Watson, on this? Down at the bottom. No. Okay. Open it up for a motion. I'll move to approve appeal number. 2661 as presented. All second. All those in favor? Opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you. You're thank, you. thank you very much. You're welcome. Going right into appeal number uh, 20. Can you oh, sorry. give me just a minute so I can get my desk cleared? And okay. That for it. All right. Thank you. Doing two jobs tonight. Trying to do two jobs. So which one was next? Twenty-six forty-two. They were kind of out of order when we got them, so I don't know if yours came in the same way.
we good to go? I believe we are. Appeal number 2642, a limited reduction of yard size request by TSW 406 LLC, 11 Ashton Street, Assessor's Map U2, Parcel 31. Can you please state your name and where you're from? And then we'll have long staff give us some information. We'll come back to you. Uh, Walter Wilson from a design company, and I'm representing the owner and the uh, application in front of the board. Thank you. Mr. Longstaff, can you give us some brief information as well as staff conference? Sure. So this, uh, again, this uh, property is eligible for the limited reduction of yard size, uh, having been built before July 3rd, 1991. I think 1920 does qualify as being built before 1991, so it's uh, eligible. It's not in the Shoreland. Uh, ah, I'm sorry. The parcel, the parcel is in the Shoreland overlay and special flood hazard area and back dune area, which does put some, some restrictions on expanding the footprint, and that's why they're proposing to do what they're doing. Um, the uh, proposed modifications um, uh, also include an accessory unit that must meet the standards of Section 9J of our uh, zoning ordinance. Um, code staff has reviewed um, the plans and found that to be compliant as proposed. Um, I put in my staff comments that uh, Walt and I had a, a discussion about <laughs> there were some some conditions uh, put on an administrative appeal that was filed back in the late 90s and uh, at that time uh, accessory units were not permitted by the town of Scarborough and so those conditions were put in place because of that and since then the zoning ordinance has been amended um, and setbacks and other uh, land use uh, standards have been amended so that this is now actually a conforming use if it's done in conformance with those standards in Section 9J, and it is. So we weren't exactly sure at first how to deal with those conditions, but upon further inspection found that they weren't conditions put on a variance, they were conditions that were put on an administrative appeal to the code enforcement officer's decision to deny the permit. So they weren't really legally binding, and now ordinances have superseded those. So just to remove that cloud from the, the discussion, uh, everything uh, with regard to the accessory unit meets the standards. And so what the board really needs to talk about is the limited reduction of yard size for the, um, the little small encroachment on the front yard setback once they expand that second story over to the wall line where the porch is. Because of the angle of the house, it kind of crosses that line. Not by much, but it still crosses the line. And as they say in legal issues, the foot's the same as the foot's the same as a mile, <laughs> so it's it's still an encroachment, and so that's why uh, Mr. Uh, Wilson is here to talk to you about the proposed project. So we're just we're just talking about one dimension, one period. Dimension. Yep, nothing else. Nothing else. And do we need to read in Section Nine J for accessory units? No, because you're not reviewing that. Okay, yeah. just making sure. <laughs> Should be simple. Okay, let us know what you're trying to do. Okay, uh, I think Brian pretty much covered it. We are looking for that little front yard setback reduction of seven inches in one corner of the building. Um, the existing house is to be re rebuilt over the existing concrete foundation in compliance with the character-based zoning ordinance in Higgins Beach. And the proposed structure will include several components that are permitted under the ordinance, and the structure will not increase the existing lot coverage. The front yard setback of 18 feet from Ashton Street to the existing front facade of the building is met. The proposed second floor is to extend over the existing first floor porch, side porch approximately seven and a half feet, which will extend the front facade of the building. Because the building is placed at an angle with Ashton Street, the extension will encroach into the front yard setback. The proposed setback from Ashton will be 17.42 feet. The proposed front yard setback will require re reduction in yard size residential to be compliant. And part two of that is the ex list the existing uh, the exact dimensional request. We're looking for a reduction of seven inches on the front yard setback. Okay, let's go into the questions. 
The existing building is structured on the lot for which the limited reduction of yard size is requested were erecting prior to July 3rd, 1991, or the lot is a vacant, non-conforming lot of record. I think that's been pretty established with Mr. Longstaff's comments. Yeah, the existing structure, um, the original, the main house was built in 1920. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, we have the building in the back, but we aren't seeking any variance for that. So that's, even though it was 1991, on the back building, we don't need any any variances for the rear building, just the front building that was built in 1920. Okay, thank you. The requested reduction is reasonably necessary to permit the owner or occupant of the property to use and enjoy the property in essentially the same manner as other similar properties are utilized in the zoning district. Uh, the front yard reduction of seven inches is written reasonably necessary to permit the owner to ex extend the front wall of the side over the existing front side porch. The front gable wall will then be in a straight line in compliance with the character code of Higgins Beach. Article 4, Section A2D states that the outer wall of the main building mass must be located entirely in a single plane. Articulation in the wall line is not permitted except by use of a component. So when that wall is extended across, it's the mass of the building we're talking about, and we aren't allowed to have any ins and outs, so I couldn't set that portion back to meet the, the ordinance because the ordinance says it has to be a straight line. So the second floor extension over the porch being flush with the front of the building at the angle requires the seven inch encroachment to take place. Do the physical features of the lot and or location of the existing structures on the lot, it would, be not it would not be practical to construct the proposed expansion, enlargement, or new structure in conformance with the currently applicable yard size requirements. The existing building and concrete foundation is not parallel to the front property line. It is located at a slight angle to Ashton Street. The proposed expansion of the second floor front gable wall extends into the summit of the fr uh, front yard setback. The design standards of the CDCR zone require that this wall be in a single plane, and therefore it creates the encroachment. Thank you. The impacts and effects of the enlargement expansion or new building or structure on existing uses in the neighborhood will not be substantially different from or greater than the impacts and effects of a building or structure which conforms to the yard size requirements. The project design has received administrative review approval for compliance with the zone. The, the building satisfies the size, shape, height, and bulk requirements, and as such, the impacts and effects of this building on existing uses in the neighborhood will not be substantially different from or greater than the impacts and effects of a building which conforms to the front yard setback. The requested seven inch variance will have little, if any, neighborhood impact or effect. Thank you. The applicant has not commenced construction of the enlargement expansion building or structure for which the limited reduction of yard size is requested so that the Board of Appeals is not considered an after-the-fact application. No construction has started. Thank you. We have any letters on this, Mr. Longstaff? No. Okay. Um, questions, questions from the Board? I'm having a hard time visually. I'm not an engineer here, designer, understanding the necessity for seven inches, I think. And I'm, I, the foundation meets the setback but you want to put an addition on, and because of the character-based guidelines, it has to be flush? What are we? Is this yeah. created Single by the character-based guidelines so that he has to do this because of the new guidelines? Mm -hmm. That's what I thought. It's, it's yeah. forcing the issue. The center main ma mass of the building, or the core of the building under the ordinance, has to have no undulations in the exterior wall at all. However, you'll see that there are undulations in the proposed building, and that's accomplished by what's called components that you add to the mass to create the, the irregular shapes in some places. Mm -hmm. But the main core of the building, which the front wall of this house is, has to be in a straight line. Any other questions from the board? I'd like to open it to the public hearing. Anybody wish to speak on this appeal? Please take the podium. Give us your name and address. Hi, I'm Bob Jaworski. I'm the abutter on the Bayview side. I'm representing the estate on the Bayview side. We don't object to the seven inches on that. The only thing that we would ask is, I think on the plan, it actually shows that the fence is actually on 
the other side of the property that is part of the project to just get put to the proper space, but we don't object to the, the seven inches. It doesn't impact anything really. In the, the, the existing house is there now. Thank you. Mr. Wilson, do you have any objections to that request? Um, yes, actually, I've talked to the owner about that, and they intend to redo the fence um, and put it right on the property line. We've a I've actually been out there and walked the fence line, and we talked about it, and they want to fix the fence anyway. So that will be that satisfies approaching on yeah, that side. David put a fence back over that yeah. Great. Where it's supposed to be. Right? Thank you. Right. And we always look to appease the neighbors whenever we can. So. Anybody else wish to speak in the public hearing? Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing. If we don't have any additional questions, we can go into the questions through the board. Okay. Existing building or structure on the lot for which the limited reduction of yard size is requested were not erected prior to July 3rd, 1991, or the lot is a vacant, non-conforming lot of record. I think this is pretty self-explanatory. I'm sure the town records will reflect that the house was built in 1920. I agree. No question on the date of the building. I agree. Mr. Longstaff has confirmed that, so there's really no question on this. It was definitely built before. All those in favor of one being met. It's unanimous. Two, the requested reduction and reasonably necessary to permit the owner occupant of the property to use and enjoy the property in essentially the same manner as other similar properties are utilized in the zoning district. About that the same. I mean, I guess we've become familiar with Higgins Beach. I'm not quite sure if this is similar to exactly what the properties are surrounding it, but again, um, you know, seven inches so they can have uh, conform come in conformance with the Higgins Beach ordinance and all that seems okay. I agree. Requesting that small of a variance for this is, uh, again, this is being forced by the character code of the Higgins Beach, Beach ordinance, so I, there really isn't a fault here to be found. Yeah, having reviewed all the exhibits that you presented, um, I, I see where there's no, you haven't really substantially changed everything to the point where it would make no sense and it seems to be consistent with the character codes. Makes all the, makes all the sense to me. This is, uh, this is another Higgins Beach rebuild. Uh, everybody's getting these places and rebuilding them. Uh, I'm 100% in favor of it. Seven inches of nothing. Yeah, I mean, as I addressed Mr. Longstaff, that we kind of forced the issue with this by putting in place the character-based coding, so they have to do it to comply. So it's pretty straightforward as to what's happening here. All those in favor of 2B met? It's unanimous. Three, due to the physical features of the lot or the location of existing structures on the lot, it would not be practical to construct the proposed expansion enlargement or new structure in conformance with the currently applicable yard size requirements. I appreciate you answering my questions regarding the seven inches. That kind of makes more sense to me now, and I think that's fine. Uh, demonstrated by the the stamp survey, um, the building is is where it is, and it's on the property where it's located on the drawing. And um, there really is no way around this if they want to uh, make any sort of expansion or modification to this structure. Yeah, I believe you've done the best you can to make it exactly where it should be. I'm in agreement. Yeah, Mr. Wilson has addressed the fact <coughs> that it's not where it should be to be able to be do things, do, doing things the best we could on this, so we have to deal with where the house is located, and this looks like to be the best so solution to that. So all in favor of three being met. Unanimous. Four, the impacts and effects of enlargement, expansion, or new building or structure on existing uses in the neighborhood will not be substantially different from or greater than the impacts and effects of buildings or structures which conform to the yard size requirement. I mean, this is kind of what's happening in Higgins Beach is you're, everyone's fixing up the houses and trying to come in conformance there. And so, you know, I don't think seven inches and no one would, would ever know that uh, this is an issue. It's fine. I would agree. I have nothing to add. I don't believe there'll be any impact. As far as I'm concerned, if the administrator review approval was uh, done, it's a done deal. We're here for seven inches, <laughs> not the house. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's pretty 
minimal what we're looking at here. I mean, it's not going to really affect anything for sight or anything with that extra seven inches. So I would say we've definitely gone over everything we need to do with this. All in favor, four being met. Unanimous, five. Applicant has not commenced construction or enlargement, expansion, building, or structure for which the limited reduction in yard size is requested so that the Board of Appeals is not considering an after the fact application. It's pretty straightforward. I asked the question, it was answered as no. I can verify it. Correct. And Mr. Longstaff's verified it, so. Yeah. Nothing to add. Nothing to add. Well, so. Yep. Thank you for verifying that for us as well. Oh, yes, I do. You're right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All in favor of five being met. Thank you. Janana's. Open it up for a motion. Motion to approve. Yeah. We have to go through. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'll let somebody else do it. 2642. Oh, yeah. Motion to approve 2632. 42. 2042. Sorry. Second. <laughs> All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much. Looks like you're camping out there for one more, Mr. Wilson. Yes. <laughs> we'll let Mr. Longstaff get his paperwork ready and then we'll move on. State who you are and who you represent. Uh, Walter Wilson from the design company, and I represent the owner who is presenting this request to the board. Thank you. Mr. Longstaff, can you give us a brief overview and staff comments? Sure. Um, again, this is the night for limited reduction of yard <laughs> sizes, um, except for the one miscellaneous appeal. Um, this is, a, uh, again, a qualifying or eligible property uh, having been built in 1924. Um, this property is not in the shoreland overlay, but is in a special flood hazard area with a, it's an AO zone with a depth of one foot. It's also in the back dune and the erosion hazard area. Um, the appellant proposes a substantial renovation that includes adding about two and a half feet to the westerly end or backside of the, the existing footprint. And this results in an encroachment of the minimum secondary yard front setback. So this property has two frontages, as you can see on the screen. Uh, maybe I can make it a little bit bigger so you can see what um, it, It's on the corner of Bayview and Vesper, so it does have two frontages. Vesper is the primary frontage. Bayview is the secondary frontage. Uh, this, the Higgins Beach zoning ordinance requires on the secondary frontage a minimum setback of 12 feet. Again, because of the angle, the way the house is laid out parallel, or excuse me, perpendicular to Vesper Street, and the property <coughs> line kind of coming in at an angle on Bayview, as the house goes back, it encroaches closer and closer to the property line. So most of the house already encroaches on that 12-foot secondary setback, but by adding the, the, the uh, two and a half feet to the back, they're expanding on that encroachment, and that's why Mr. Wilson is here asking for the limited size. Thank you. Mr. Wilson, anything to add that Mr. Longstaff hasn't? Um, no, we covered it pretty good. And uh, yes, the, the sideline right now, most of it, it starts out at the front meeting the 12 foot, but tapers back at an angle on the sideline. Um, we're going to take the front porch that's there now off and utilize some of that square footage to cover the extension in the rear. So the net result is that the building has no more square footage on the property than what exists now. Okay. Get down through the questions. 
The existing building and structure on the lot for which the minimum reduction of yard size is requested were erected prior to July 3rd, 1991, or the lot is a vacant, non-conforming lot of record. Again, I think this is pretty self-explanatory. Ms. Long, that's already told us. So. Yeah, this tax assessor's record is 1824. Thank you. The requested reduction is reasonably necessary to permit the owner or occupant of the property to use and enjoy the property in essentially the same manner as other similar properties are utilized in the zoning district. The existing structure is almost 100 years old and is not code compliant in many aspects. Many of the interior walls are vertical boards without any stud framing. The stairs do not meet code. The windows are not egress compliant. The bathroom and kitchens, the kitchen are totally inefficient by today's standards. The bedrooms are small with low ceilings, and the sunroom above the garage is on a separate level from the main floor. It's kind of like a split between the first and the second, so it's uh, a lot of confusion in the house as to how you walk up and go down and around things with the stairway being as small as it is. The cottage is balloon framed, and the building shows no evidence of insulation, and there's no central heating system. The renovations and improvements that are proposed and the requested reduction in front yard setback is reasonably necessary to permit the owner to use and enjoy the property in essentially the same manner as similar properties in the district. The proposed building design meets the character requirements of the CDCR1 Higgins Beach Character District. Uh, we have a letter of that uh, stating that, as well as all the restrictions in the overlay districts that are, proposed, that are imposed on the property. Thank you. Due to the physical features of the lot and or location of existing structures on the lot, it would not be practical to construct the proposed expansion, enlargement, or new structure in conformance with the currently applicable yard size requirements. The property is located on the corner of Vesper and Bayview, the primary front being Vesper and the secondary being Bayview. The existing building location on the property meets the setbacks with the exception of the front, uh, secondary front yard on Bayview side. It would not be practical practical to construct the proposed expansion in conformance with the applicable yard size requirements due to this to do the structure would need to be lifted up and relocated on the property. The structure was built before zoning estate requirements and were, were established and has been in the same location since 1924. Also on this we're into the character code again and that is I can't step back that rear of the house to meet the setback because the wall has to be in a straight, singular plane going down on the main mass of the house. Did you say this has a foundation or no? What's that? Foundation house. Does this have a foundation on that? We're going to have to do a new one underneath the house. Because it's in disarray or disrepair? Right now it's got circular cedar posts on sauna tubes. Okay. And they're raised up about five and a half feet off the ground. Okay. And you know, we've got to redo the, the, the support system under the house. Thank you. The impacts and effects of the enlargement expansion of a new building or structure on existing uses in the neighborhood will not be substantially different from or greater than the impacts and effects of a building or structure which conforms to the, lot, the yard size requirement. The impacts and effects of the proposed renovations including the second floor expansion and the new roof line will not be substantially different or greater than the impacts and effects of building a structure which conforms to these requirements. The proposed renovation meets the size and building mass requirements of the CDCR1 zone does not increase the number of bedrooms or living spaces within the building. It's well below the maximum building height and does not exceed 20% of lot coverage required by DEP. If the existing structure was relocated on the lot in order to satisfy the setback, the renovated building would be the same size as the proposal. So the granting of the three foot variance request in order to make, maintain the existing build, building location on a lot would not create a substantial different impact or effect. How much higher is this going up than the existing? Have to check. existing mill building from ground to top of roof is 25 foot 8 inches. The proposed uh, expansion of the vertical roof would be 31 foot 6 inches. Uh, the maximum in that zone is 35 feet. So, so it's going up about 6 feet. Yeah. Okay. 
The applicant has not commenced construction or of the enlargement expansion building or structure for which limited reduction in yard size is requested. So the Board of Appeals is not considering an after the fact application. No construction started. Thank you. Any questions from the board? Yes, sorry. Um, it sounds like the building, the house that's there now is not in good condition. Um, it's, it's in good condition for the use of a summer cottage. Right. Yeah. So when you're saying you're pouring a new foundation, what is happening to that house? Is it? What's going to happen is the front porch is going to come off, and in the rear of the existing cottage is a garage. That's going to come off. The basic core of the house, which is 22 by 26, is going to remain right where it is. The new foundation work will go in, and then the extension will be built back on the rear where the garage came off, and the front porch will be rebuilt in the front. Okay, thank you. Are you putting this more in compliance with like the flood floodplains that may be coming out? Are you already addressing that? Yes, the new proposed floodplain is going to be an AE14, and a finished floor is at 15 foot two. And in an AE zone, you have to have at least one foot above the floodplain for a finished floor. Okay, so you. it meets it right where it is. Thank you. Any other questions? Seeing none, I'd like to open it up to the public hearing. Anybody wish to speak from the public? Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing. We can go down through the questions. I just have one comment, yes. Mr. Chair, if I could. Just to clarify something that Mr. Wilson said, just so that the board is clear <coughs> on it. Um, I have to respectfully um, disagree that the, the two foot extension on the back couldn't be stepped because he could actually put an extension on the back that was a rear addition because he has a 30 foot setback line that you can see right there. So the 30-foot setback line would allow a rear addition, basically where that deck is, that could be stepped in. So just be, he, he, the owner and the designer choose to extend the building in line with the existing walls because they can, they have the ability to do that based on the length of that building and still be within the compliant uh, dimensions of the code. Okay. Just, just a minor technicality. Yeah, it is. Uh, the, the Maximum length of a building at Higgins Beach from front to back is 38 feet, 38, which, which is this going? This is going to be 38 feet, um, and we couldn't put a rear addition where the deck is because we exceed the 20 percent lock coverage that DEP mandates. Yeah. Okay. So we're proposing just to make the building, the basic mass of the building, 38 feet long. Does that address what we just went over? I'm not sure, though, Walt, how that plays with the 8 by 8 side addition, if you can't. I, I know that you took the front porch off to account for some of that. So right. why would that not, I mean, you could have, technically, if you didn't have the deck and you reduced the size of the porch, you could have put a small rear addition on there. Well, in, just the, in the Higgins Beach Code, decks don't count for uh, building mass because there is no square footage in the Higgins Beach Code for lot coverage. It's only in the DEP. DEP does not cover, include an open deck under lot coverage. But they do include the 8 by 8 side addition. Yes, they do. You include that, you're right at 20 percent. Anything more? Thank you. I've got a question for Brian. Brian, you haven't reviewed this, apparently, right? Yes, we did. You did? Yes. And you approved it? Yes. Oh, okay. Because it meets all of the character standards. Okay. Thank you. I, I just didn't want Mr. Wilson to portray that there was no other option. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And you do get right down to that 38 feet when you come before us, I will say. Right, yeah. Um, okay, let's go into the questions. The existing building or structures on the lot for which the limited reduction of yard size is requested were erected prior to July 3rd, 1991, or the lot is a vacant, non-conforming lot of record. Pretty self-explanatory. Mr. Longstaff's already told us. All right. I'm sure the town records will show the house was built in 1924. I agree. Agreed. Agreed. Like I said, it's pretty straightforward. All in favor of one being met? It's unanimous. 
two, the requested reduction is reasonably necessary to permit the owner or occupant of this property to use and enjoy the property in essentially the same manner as other similar properties that are utilized in the zoning district. I mean, I think the applicant has sufficiently answered the question. You know, you want to come up to code, and I'm surprised there are still houses down there that don't have heat and aren't insulated. So, uh, interesting to hear. I think you just want to come in conformance. This is what most of the houses up there are now. I'll add that uh, he's, he's indicated that um, there are a lot of failing systems in the home being 100 years old. There's only so much you can do with that with the existing insulation to try to beef it up and make it more reasonable for the other seasons of the year. Yeah, I would agree. I don't think there's anything that you're doing that would not positively impact. Yeah. I think the new structure is pretty much the same size as the old structure. <laughs> it's just going to be a house that they can live in, finally. Mm -hmm. I'm in agreement. I think there were a few things that were mentioned. One was the stairs are not in compliance, so I'm assuming they're not even regulation stairs for going up and down. Um, there's no real egress in the windows. If those don't meet. I'm assuming the electrical is not knob and tube, but it's probably fuses or something. Some of that's been repaired along the way. I'm not sure if there's any of it left, but it has been you know, worked on over the years. I don't know if the whole house is void of knob and tube or not. Okay. And you're upgrading some other stuff. I mean, if there's kitchens and appliances in there that are outdated, I think bringing it up to a lot of the safety issues is my major point here. It seems like it's really being brought up safety-wise all around for the windows, the doors, the egress, the stairs, um, the property actually having the requirements that it should have for a property like this. So all those in favor of two being met? It's unanimous. Three, due to the physical features of the lot and or location of existing structures on the lot, it would not be practical to construct the proposed expansion enlargement or new structure in conformance with the currently applicable and yard size requirements. I think we're getting back to the character base on this and we can go down through the line, but I think this is where it's punching its way in again. Well, and I think you've also said that the existing building already doesn't meet the secondary front yard setback, and so you're already not in compliance and you're just trying to, I think you're limited by these character zones. I mean, I understand what Brian is saying. You do have other options, but you have two. So this is one that you're choosing and um, I agree with the comment regarding the secondary front yard setback. That was what I was going to say, but I don't have anything additional to add. Yeah, I think, you know, you meet the character standards. There's no increase in size. You're meeting within the limits of DEP. You've got all sorts of restrictions that are, are around this property, and I think you're doing it the best you can. Yeah, with the, with the house in the position of its current position, it's kind of ridiculous to expect anybody to jack it up and then move it three inches or seven inches or nine inches, whatever it is, um, I think uh, I'm in agreement with what they're doing. Well, and I don't think it could be probably jacked up and moved with the shape that it's in and the yeah, features that it has right now. I mean, Mr. Longstaff and Mr. Wilson only differed mm -hmm. on one thing, and I, I agree with Mr. Longstaff about that. And, I mean, other than that, I don't really see anything that's not where it should be. All in favor of three being met? Unanimous. Four, the impacts and effects on the enlargement expansion of new building or structure and the existing uses in the neighborhood will not be substantially different from or greater than the impacts and effects of a building or structure which conforms to the yard size requirements. No, I mean, I'm just trying to fix this house up, make it nicer, get into compliance here with code and with the um, Higgins Beach ordinances and whatnot. And um, so I don't think it's going to have an impact. So I think we're good. I agree. I mean, it seems to be the trend with other homes in the area who are going into similar renovations that uh, this isn't out of the ordinary of what the trend has been. Uh, additionally, the applicant stated, as has been mentioned already, they're going to be uh, in compliance with the character based requirements of CDCR1. I agree, and I think it's important to note, too, that they're improving the, you know, the flood zone uh, requirements, too, stepping up. I'm in agreement. Yeah, coming from a form, former insurance agent's aspect, there's a lot of things that are being really done to this yeah. home that would not make it un insurable if it stayed the way that it was. And it is nice that it's coming up to the character-based coding. And there's a lot of things with the house that are quite fractured, probably lived its life and 
really need to be repaired. I mean, no one can stay in a house in Maine if there's no installation insulation in it right. throughout the winter time. Uh, number four, all in favor? Unanimous. Five, applicant has not commenced construction of the enlargement, expansion, building, or structure for which the limited reduction in yard size is requested, so that the Board of Appeals is not considering an after the fact application. Applicant has testified that construction has not begun. I agree. I agree. I walked by there the other day, nothing's been done. <laughs> well, based on your walk by, which you're not supposed to do. No. <laughs> I walked by it. I didn't look at it. I walked by it. <laughs> as long as we clarify that. Okay. He has to walk through the neighborhood. He has to walk through the neighborhood with blinders on so he can't see any of this new construction. That's fine. All in favor of number five being met. You all said it's unanimous. Open it up for a lady. Motion. I make a motion to approve appeal number 2643 as presented. Is there a second? I'll second. All those in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you very much. I did paint this <laughs> Wait, yes. yesterday or today? <laughs> <laughs> appeal if you folks are in your books there will be the special exceptions for the next appeal and you should all have nice new tabs in there showing you exactly what you need to be oh. if you were not here last week I you will not have nice new tabs in your book so I should leave my book behind this, this week. if we can get someone to put tabs in your book that was a Karen thing you might want to wait a month to get the tabs in your book because there's a lot of staff that's pitching in for a departed member of the staff. She's still alive. Taking up, <laughs> she's, st she's still alive, yes. She has taken up a position with another town, and she's very happy with what she's doing. Yeah, sorry about that. She is still with us, but sorely missed at, at the meetings here. She kind of keeps, keeps me in control and tells me where I need to go. That's what I'm trying to say. She had a rule. She's just <laughs> <laughs> All right, for the next appeal, are we ready? Yes. Okay, please take the podium. Whoever's here to present, please state your name and address and what it is you're looking to do briefly, and then I'll go over to Mr. Longstaff. My name's Richard Cook. Um, we're trying to uh, put a tenant in our building. What's your address? 94 Broad Turn Road. Thank you. Mr. Longstaff, could you go over any staff comments or any additional information on the appeal? Please? Sure. Um, this is a miscellaneous appeal uh, to basically convert um, a legally existing non-conforming use um, in the rural farm district on Broad Turn Road. Um, Mr. Cook and, and former owners have operated um, a woodworking facility there. I've you probably know exactly how far back it goes, but it goes back decades. Since, since it was built. Since it was built. So there's always been a cabinetry making woodworking uh, facility there. And um, along the way, they added some additional storage buildings that you can see on the screen. Um, buildings B and C are the ones that are going to be uh, of issue tonight. And those were basically used to store uh, the woodworking products, the cabinetry that was produced at the at the facility, and then it would, would be trucked out of there to be installed at wherever you know, the, the location was. I guess, uh, according to Mr. Cook's um, uh, letter um, and explanation, the business dynamic has changed. Um, they're reducing, kind of down, downsizing and scaling down their operation, and they no longer have uh, need of the capacity that that is in those buildings B and C, and they have an opportunity now to lease those to another entity um, for storage of their finished product. There would be no processing, no additional manufacturing, nothing other than storage warehousing of the product to be then shipped out of that uh, on various trucks uh, of, of uh, 
size that I'm, I'm not you know, sure of. And I'm sure uh, Mr. Cook will, will talk about that. So what's before the board is a miscellaneous appeal. It's the tool that we use to exchange or change or convert one non-conforming use to another non-conforming use, hopefully no more non-conforming than the previous use. And that's really the job of the board to determine. Are there any additional impacts, negative impacts, things that will impact the neighborhood or be out of character with the neighborhood that are greater than what currently exists? And in order to do that, the board will review this based on the special exception criteria in section 4I that, that talk about uh, air quality, water quality, pollution, traffic, and, and those kinds of issues. And that's how, that's how we kind of make that decision. The other point I will make before Mr. Cook <coughs> talks is, is that the miscellaneous appeal uh, from, uh, for an expansion, change of use, whatever uh, the, the use issue is, must first go to the planning board, Scarborough Planning Board, for an advisory opinion uh, as they review these types of um, non-residential uses more often and they may have better insight into things like traffic counts safety issues and uh, those kinds of things. That was done um, on Monday night, August 6th, just this week. Uh, minutes haven't been typed up as, as because of poor departed Karen. Uh, so uh, I did receive an email from Jamel Torres, assistant planner, uh, that the board's advisory opinion was favorable. Uh, they had no strenuous objections of any kind to um, the proposed conversion of that use. The board, it, according to the ordinance, must uh, not uh, vote contrary to that opinion unless they document an, an exact and specific reason why. So if you have or uncover uh, reasons that the planning board did not, uh, then you may, uh, you may vote contrary to how the board's opinion went, but you just have to be aware that you need to have good reasons. I guess my first question is, B and C, were those actually done legally? Or yes, what? yeah. The so I'm not looking like at displays or something that's been added on If I've property. done my job properly, I wouldn't be bringing you uh, an <laughs> illegal operation to approve or, or, or further expand <laughs> this check. Mm -hmm. We have had I some. appreciate that you're checking. <laughs> I don't appreciate that you're questioning my ability to do my job. I'm not <laughs> questioning your ability. I'm just kidding. We have had people do crazy things. <laughs> Ryan, yes, they actually, received a, they actually received a miscellaneous appeal for that purpose back um, several years. I can't remember the exact date, but the file, was, file documents that those buildings were approved. The use okay. of those buildings. So we're just basically looking yeah. at the uses of those buildings it's just going a, forward. It, just it, the yep. reason is it's no longer it's no longer One the other. cook's entity that's using those buildings. Okay. It's another entity. Um, even if the cooks changed their manufacturing and built something else that was not cabinetry or woodworking and wanted to store, they'd still have to come back for that miscellaneous bill because it's not what they were approved for originally. Thank you. Okay. Very detailed. Appreciate can, it. Can more than one business be operating? Yeah, it's a, it's, it's a lease. Um, it, that's just the form. They, they retain ownership. Mm -hmm. It's just the use that's in there. But that's one of the reasons why it's a different, it's a different situation than what they were approved for. Okay, so it's legal. Yeah. Okay. Yep. I think Mr. Longstaff's done a pretty good job of explaining everything to us. So mm -hmm. if you need to add anything, you certainly can. If not, we'll go into the questions. No, that's fine. Thank you. I didn't mean to step on you. No, that's, that's okay with me. <laughs> oh, you did? Yeah, now would be the time if you have additional information. Um, the applicant had come to us before and oh, wanted to give us additional Im information, but we need to do it when your appeal is actually okay, being presented. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Mr. Longstaff, for reminding me. I probably do if you need me to Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I will put this into the record. I have the official record. So. Excellent. Thank you. <laughs> Just taking a moment to review this.
everybody have a chance to review it? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm sure we have some questions going on, and I've got a couple already myself that I noticed. All right, standards to special exceptions. The proposed use will not create unsanitary, unhealthy conditions by reason of sewage disposal, emissions to the air, water, or other aspects of its design or operation. No, nothing's changing. As a matter of fact, we were finishing, which we're not doing anymore. We're, okay. Uh, so if anything, it's reduced. Okay. The proposed use will not create un unsafe vehicular or pedestrian traffic conditions when added to the existing and foreseeable traffic in its vicinity. Again, the traffic's going to be reduced. Uh, we had roughly 14 people working there. They will have five in the front building. There'll be one now. Uh, the tractor trailers that were coming in were loaded with lumber, hardwood lumber. Uh, we had straight body trucks. There was a lot of traffic. Plus, once the kitchens were made, we were shipping them out. Okay. Um, Thank you. I got a question. Uh, the new operation, though, do you have any idea how much traffic that's going to generate? The, the, the leasing? Out back, uh, they yeah. Have, yeah, the second page. Yeah. It doesn't say that in here. They have four trucks. They have four trucks? Yes. Four vans. They're actually vans, they're not trucks. And do you know how often they're going to be coming in and out? Well, I would imagine they... Sorry, I'm sorry, that's what the second... If you want to speak, you're just going to have to introduce yourself and state where you live, and then we can get word from you, because we need to have it on the record. We want to read this in the room? Okay. Would one of you like to read your... Latest addition to your appeal and to the record? That would help answer some of those questions. Yeah, usually. Just oh. state who you are and your address, please. I'm Cheryl Cook. I'm Richard's wife, co owner of the property. Okay. Um, the second page was actually. We need to do the whole thing if you could. Just read both pages. Oh, in. mine too? Wow. Yes. Because it was added in, so. With, with my apologies. That's okay. To Brian Longstaff, zoning administrator, town of Scarborough. 94 Broad Turn Road is comprised of three buildings A, 7,500 square feet, B, 3,000 square feet, and C, 5,000 square feet. We would like to lease the two back buildings B, 3,000 square feet, and C, 5,000 square feet to North Atlantic Naturals for use as a warehouse for their products. The front building A will still be used for woodworking but on a much smaller scale than has been used in the past. <clears throat> the front building A houses the woodworking equipment and is where the cook and cook cabinetry kitchen cabinets were built. The building B was used for warehousing of raw material and mis miscellaneous storage, and building C was used for warehousing of inventory, equipment, and storage of our cabinets until a customer was ready for delivery. We expect any incoming or outgoing deliveries from building A in the future to be made only by pickup truck and employment to generate one to three vehicles. In the past, when Cook & Cook was building custom kitchen cabinetry at 94 Broad Turn Road, we were employing 10 to 15 people, which required parking for 10 to 15 vehicles. We had tractor trailer trucks delivering lumber every two to three weeks, Highland Hardwood, Holt Bugby, Rex Lumber. We had 40-foot straight body trucks delivering plywood sheet goods every two to three weeks, North Pacific, Atlantic Plywood. We had paint and finish, ML Campbell, Sean Williams, deliveries every two to three weeks, on tractor trailer trucks, we had hardware deliveries, Atlantic Plywood, Richelieu, Wilson Art, Hayflot, every two to three weeks on 30-foot straight body trucks along with hardware and general merchandise deliveries by UPS or FedEx at least weekly. We had completed kitchens leaving here every two to three weeks on one or two straight body 30-foot trucks by Wilson Moving. In summary, the approximate vehicle traffic we generated was three tractor trailers a month two straight body 40 foot trucks a month, four 30 foot straight body trucks a month, and four UPS FedEx deliveries a month. Employees had 12 cars times 20 days a month. There'll be no change to the footprint of the buildings, nor envir environmental, nor lo noise levels impact. Thank you, Richard Peacock. And just your second page. I moved on to page two. You don't need to do the date and 
Okay. When you this submit is... it, you can just read in the word. It's... Okay. To whom it may concern, this letter is to describe the business operations that would be taking place by North Atlantic Naturals at 94C, well, B and C, Broadturn Road, Scarborough, Maine, 04074. North Atlantic Naturals would be warehousing packaged goods at this location. These would include bottled beverages and snack items. These items on average would be shipped into the location once a week by a large tractor trailer, usually the mornings of Tuesday or Friday, between <coughs> 9.30 and 11 a.m. We also would have an average of two to three small box truck deliveries each week, typically between the hours of 8.30 to 3, Monday through Friday. Additional traffic would just include the four employees of North Atlantic Naturals that would be reporting to work each day and leaving the premises by five. North Atlantic Naturals does not deal in any <coughs> equipment or hazardous waste or chemicals. Only one forklift would be utilized on the property and used inside the premises, limiting any noise disturbances. Thank you. <coughs> Wait, do you still have questions after that? Well, you mean other than whether I believe it or not? This is this outfit is is leasing two buildings for inventory. And they're only making a couple deliveries a, a week. That doesn't sound right to me. That inventory is just sitting there all the time. I don't think that this information is correct. That's my opinion. Thank you. I think they're making four deliveries a day. Well, they got four people working there. What are the four people doing? They they load their trucks. They tra take their trucks to well the high school. They well, that's not in here. Yeah, I, I think that's what she said. Yeah, additional traffic would include four employees of uh, Nan that would be reporting to work each day and leaving the premises by 5 o'clock. Mr. Place, would you like What's to go it? through all the questions and then we can ask yeah. when we open it up to board questions because I think yeah. there'll be a few. Yeah. Thank you. Going on to B, the proposed use will not create unsafe vehicular or pedestrian traffic conditions when added to the existing and foreseeable traffic in its vicinity. No. Thank you. The proposed use will not create public safety problems which would be substantially different from those created by existing uses in the neighborhood or require a substantially greater degree of municipal fire or police protection than existing uses in the neighborhood. No, I, we've, we've only had one problem in 25 years there. Okay, thank you. The proposed use will not result in sedimentation or erosion or have an adverse effect on water supplies. The proposed use will be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to the physical size, visible impact, intensity of use, proximity to other structures, and density of development. Not, nothing's changing in the buildings. Do we have an overhead that we could get on this as far as looking at the properties? Like a Google Earth or something? We can actually see the properties? I have, I have the tax map. I have the Is there anywhere I can go and bring up the street view? I just, can't see there. I just figured it'd be helpful just to see what was going on. We had one that there was a lot going on in the yard, so it seems like there's a lot going on here too, and it might, might answer some questions for people. Just to have it up. Okay, thank you. Uh, you're not located in a shoreland zone as depicted, in, uh, depicted on Town of Scarborough's official shoreland zoning. The proposed use will comply with all requirements of the Town of Scarborough shoreland zoning ordinances. The applicant has sufficient right, title, or interest in the site of the proposed use to be able to carry out the proposed use. Yes. The applicant has the technical and financial ability to meet the standards of this section and, and to comply with any conditions imposed by the Board of Appeals pursuant to subsection 5 of this section. I assume so. Okay. The proposed use will be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to the generation of noise and hours of operation. I'm sorry, could you repeat that? The proposed use will be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to the generation of noise and hours of operation. Yes, sir. What, what, what we're doing now anyway. Okay. Do we need to go 
I don't think this would have qualified for like a home based occupation, but it wouldn't it would have been separate structures anyway, right? If we if we were looking at that now. Yeah. Do we need to go we need to go into the conditions and special instructions also or no, should no, we just, just do that at the end? Just the just the I thought we've gone through this before with appeals like this. Well, it's a, that's only if, if the board feels if the board feels they need to place conditions on the approval, then that's where that comes into place. Okay. If you feel that a fence needs to be uh, constructed or um, shrubbery needs to be planted or tree buffers or things of that nature, that's where that would come into play. Okay. Uh, it's important for the applicant to know that you have the right to do that, but that's that I. I continue with the discussion and maybe that will surface if okay. any conditions need to be placed on it. But we're not looking at it as per se like a home base occupation or displays on this one, correct? Nope. Okay, thank you. Questions from the board? Start. I know you had a few, so we'll start right off with you. For your questions you had, Mr. Blaze. I don't have any questions. Okay. Does anybody else have any questions? I think my first question is North Atlantic National or Naturals, uh, you know, how are they a growing company or is, is their anticipated traffic and activity going likely to increase as time goes on? Or is it more likely to be pretty stable from what you've described? You can come up and introduce yourself and where you're from. Uh, Chuck Larson, owner of North Atlantic Naturals, uh, South Portland, Maine, is where. Okay. Yeah, um, yeah we, we've grown a lot in the last two years, but we've hit this threshold of our four trucks. We may have as much as five by our planning of 2019. When I say trucks, we're talking about Mercedes Sprinter vans. They're not big, huge trucks. Okay. And quite frankly, with the space of that, of that warehouse, that's the max we could ever possibly generate out of that location. And you're not going to have sales out of this location or customers coming to this no, location? No, no, no. If stuff gets delivered, a large tractor trailer, like I said, on Tuesdays and Fridays, which is a lot of product, by the way. Um, and then small Sprinter vans are the one we use in order. They come there in the morning, load up, and they're gone. I think we've so had one instance of the tractor trailer truck blocking traffic that you and I had discussed a while back. So. That's a pretty busy road too. I don't know, the property is probably the one, the yeah, the big loop there with the two buildings behind it. Yeah. Are the neighbors, do they have business beside you or is, are those all residential? Which way, to the left or the right? The right, there's trees to the left, so are those, those are all indiv those individual are homes? That's a little house that is started in the gardens. Okay. Okay, so you have a similar use going on there, not quite, but similar. Okay, any questions, Andrew? Oh, my, my questions were very adequately answered. I Maybe I should reserve my comments probably for later, right? Okay. Anybody at this end of the table have any questions? No, it's time. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I've got a question. Sure. What are the four people doing there all day long? Well, they don't do there all day long. They show up, take a truck, a van, and they're gone. So you got vans going in and out every day? Well, they come to work and leave. Wait a minute. You get a warehouse yep. full of product. Mm -hmm. The product is delivered in a tractor trailer mm -hmm. either Monday or Friday or Tuesday or Friday or something like that, right? It's delivered. You got four guys working there. They stack the stuff up and everything like that. How does the stuff leave? And how often does it leave the warehouse? It leaves every day in the morning. Orders are picked during the day. And when they show up, put the product on, they're gone. And when who shows up? My, my employees. Okay. Yeah. By vans, are you talking about, I know as I mentioned, the Mercedes, the Mercedes ones that are being sold out front in the Scarborough Mercedes Yeah, exactly. Lot, yeah. Those Small. size vans? Yeah. Okay. And those would be the vans that are taking the product out Correct. each morning? Correct. So in a five-day week? Yes. Five days a week. How many of your little vans are going in and out of there? Well, they come to work every day. 
four vans, and they leave. So, do the employees take them home with them? Yes, they do. So okay. four vans entering in the morning, and then four vans exiting as soon as they're filled with product. Correct. Okay. Yeah. And sometimes they don't even come back at the end of the day. They mm -hmm. sometimes go right home. And if I understand correctly, your full staff prior to the, the existing staff that you are working with in the cabinetry business, you said was approximately 12 people? 12. So you're having 12 to 15, you're going from 12 to 15 people showing up for work every day and staying there and then 12 to 15 cars leaving every evening vert to four trucks going in or four vans like passenger, you know, yeah. slightly above passenger grade vehicles going every day okay yeah. but they're still operating the cabinetry business out of the front correct yeah how much downsizing to what just to you okay okay thank you you should get a big raise then <laughs> right <laughs> any other questions from the board I'd like to open it up to the public hearing anybody from the public wish to speak seeing none close the public hearing we down through the questions. So I can read the questions. <clears throat> the proposed use will not create unsanitary or unhealthy conditions by reason of sewage disposal, emissions to the air or water, or other aspects of its design of operation. Is that down the same end, please? No, I mean, the buildings were used to store cabinetry, and now they're going to be used to store other product. So I don't think that's going to be an issue. I'll also note that the applicant stated that they're no longer using finishing products, which would theoretically pose a danger to the environment if not properly disposed, and the fact that they're no longer performing those type of tasks there um, just it decreases the risk of having any unsanitary or unhelpful conditions. I think that there'll be fewer people using the property and <clears throat> fewer impa less impact to the environment in general just because the work load that's going to change, um, I have no problem with this. It's, it's warehousing now, it's going to be warehousing in the future, so no change. I'm assuming the 12 employees didn't carpool, they probably came in independent <laughs> cars. <laughs> so we're going from 12 cars down to 4 cars coming and going on a regular basis, so we've got less emissions there. Um, like has already been stated, we have other products that aren't being done anymore that could have an unsanitary effect to the design or reasons for emissions to the air water quality. There's no, yeah, there's no real river or anything there either, right? Okay. All in favor of A, B, and MET? It's unanimous. B, the proposed use will not create unsafe vehicular or pedestrian traffic conditions when adding to the existing and foreseeable traffic in its vicinity. Start down the same end, please. Uh, this, this was very helpful, this after the fact submission. This was very helpful. Um, I'm embarrassed to say I lived on Broadturn Road for eight plus years. I had no idea that operation was going on there. I maybe saw one van pull in there in my eight years. So the fact that that never impacted me and you're now decreasing it to even more, I mean, that seems great. Yeah, I agree. I mean, you're, and again, I appreciate the after the fact after the fact submission, um, you're indicating that you're going from uh, 12 to 15 employees down to four. Uh, and looking at the comparison with the apartment complex directly adjacent to it with a significant number of cars coming and going each day, theoretically, based on the numbers that you've given us, you'll have less traffic coming out of your uh, property now than before. Down the side. Yeah, I don't, I don't think there's going to be any significant change um, other than improvement um, to the uh, existing use. I'm not convinced that there's no impact. I think there is an impact. I think there's a big impact. But that's my opinion. Um, I do like the fact that you guys have a U-shaped driveway, so we're not getting things backing in there and backing onto Broad Turn Road, which could be very dangerous. When the tractor trailer trucks come, do they pull into your driveway for that U, or do they back in from the... They pull right in. Okay, so they're not backing it off from that road at any time. So that would be a real big concern for me. So I like that the U-shape has mm -hmm. the ability to get traffic in and out without obviously addressing someone that's going to work every day there for eight years. So all those in favor of B being met? 
Yeah, uh, it's one, two, three, four. So you one opposed. The proposed use will not create public safety problems, which will be substantially different from those created by existing uses in the neighborhood <coughs> or require a substantial de greater degree of municipal fire police protection than existing uses in the neighborhood. I would think just looking at the apartments next to there, we can have some comments about that, but we'll start down this end as well. Right, I don't see how this would be any significantly different. Maybe the product you're storing might be a little more appealing, but you know, if the planning board seems okay with it, that seems fine. I would agree. Um, it wouldn't create any additional public safety concerns that would certainly um, be more so than the apartment complex next door with all the different tenants and folks that live there. I, yeah, I don't see any problems with that. I'm in agreement. One thing I'm looking at is I'm trying to look at this overhead that we've put up. Mr. Longstaff, thank you for doing that. With the U-shape, is there like a driveway where it goes into the apartments from your property? It looks like there's one there where there was no buffering, so I just didn't know what that was. Looks like something's stuck on the there's a, there's building there. That's parking. Oh, that's that's parking spaces. Uh, okay, but that doesn't connect. There's a log that blocks it off. Okay. Thank you. Uh, let's see. All in favor of CBMF? Unanimous. D, the proposed use will not result in sedimentation or erosion or have an adverse effect on the water supplies. Said that it will not, and I believe that. They've clearly stated that they're no longer using finishing products, and from uh, from my standpoint, that decreases any possible um, adverse effect on water supplies. I see no negative impact. I agree with the no impact statement. Yeah, this is pretty self-explanatory. I mean, I don't think how this is going to change things at all. Probably there's more going on there now than would be going on there in the future if this is for if this passes. All in favor of DVMET? Unanimous. E, the proposed use will be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to physical size, visual impact, intensity of use, proximity to other structures, and density of de development. And that's why I asked Mr. Longstaff to bring this up for us. So. They're not changing anything. Right. Uh, okay, sorry. The, um, I mean, I think the proposed use is compatible to what was being operated there currently and for the you know, last 20, whatever, how long, and um, will not be changed. I agree. Um, again, that the, the purpose of the property is not going to be changed. I'll also point out to my earlier comment with regard to uh, traffic is already um, with an apartment complex directly adjacent to them. There's already a significant amount of traffic going in and out of that facility. Um, and then with the proposed reduction of vehicles, maybe going from, again, 12, 12 to 15 full-time employees down to four, maybe five, you're, not, uh, you're decreasing the amount of traffic coming in and out of that facility. I would most definitely agree with that. My father was a cabinet maker. I remember growing and worked right out of the house, and I can remember all the people coming in and out of our house all the, at, all through the day, and the, um, the the sound of the saws running out in the shop, and electric sanders, and everything else. And there was always a significant mm -hmm. amount of noise with just one man doing the work. And so, from my opinion, looking at this, going from 12 to 15 cabinet makers, go, scaling down to one. And then a warehouse or, or storage being turned into warehouse facility that's basically going to be accessed once a day for a few hours and then a couple times a week to stock up. I see a tremendous decrease in the negative impact to the community and, and the abutters. So I, I think it's a great idea. I, I, don't have, I don't have any problem with it because it's... It's warehousing now, it's going to be warehousing in the future. So. Well, it does help to see the overhead, so we can see that there's something going on right next door to them that's an apartment complex, so it makes me a little bit more at ease with it, because if it was just regular houses being on both sides and a business in the middle. But by Mr. Longstaff's comments, this was permitted as it was running before. It wasn't like they were just opening this up and running this business without anybody knowing, and the town had to go down and tell them that they needed to have permits for it. So, all in favor of E being met. Unanimous. F, 
it's not located in a shoreland zone, correct? That's correct. So we don't really need to go on to that, but just all in favor of FBM met. It's unanimous. G, the applicant has sufficient right, title, or interest in the site of the proposed use to be able to carry out the proposed use. Start down at this end, well. I'm sure the applicant can back up the fact that they own the property. Mr. Yeah. Oh, Mr. Yeah. Chairman, in, in the packet, you have a copy of their deed and a mortgage okay. discharge um, with the book and page number um, just, just to move that along. Thank you for pointing that out. I appreciate that. Um, also, in addition, the uh, I agree, um, but there's also the note from 2000, I believe it's January 3rd, 2007, the code enforcement officer reaffirming that this is uh, this is uh, an acceptable use for the site. And I would presume he's going to pay you to store his stuff on your property, right? <laughs> Which, so uh, I'm, I'm expecting that that's probably going to even help improve your financial position, yeah. especially as you scale back your business. Either that or they're going to be building cabinets. <laughs> <laughs> A lot less cabinets. I'm in agreement. Yeah, I mean, you've proven that you have the right. Mr. Longstaff's backed that up with what's in our packet. So, I mean, you folks have the right and title interest in the property, and you're using it in a way that is permitted. So all in favor of... G being met, it's unanimous. H, the applicant has the technical and financial ability to meet the standards of this section and to comply with any conditions imposed by the Board of Appeals pursuant to subsection five of this section. Mr. Chairman, if I may. Yes, sir. In your packets, the applicant has provided information, uh, a summary from the Maine Department of the Secretary of State showing that the 94 Broad Turn Road Associates LLC is a company in good standing. They also provided a copy of the LLC's authority from Gorham Savings Bank, listing Richard Cook and or Cheryl Cook as designated members of the LLC that can withdraw funds for that purpose if that adequately answers that question. Thank you. Do you want to just keep on answering these for us? Nope. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I only step in where needed. Let's go down the end and come back through. Well, I think the applicant has submitted information to suffice each. Uh, I agree. I have nothing to add. Yeah, very complete application. Thank you. I agree. Um, yeah, I would agree as well. And to be honest with you, I don't see that we're going to propose anything for that, but I could be wrong. All in favor of HBMF? Mm -hmm. I. Anything on this one? <laughs> the proposed use will be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to generation of noise and hours of operations. We've already had board comments on this, and we've had comments from the applicant, but let's just go down through to <coughs> finalize it, please. All right. Again, I mean, I think the proposed use is going to be compatible to what was being operated there previously, and again, we're scaling back to a more quieter. Yeah. I agree, and I'd also add they're, uh, they're indicating that large tractor-trailer deliveries will be between the hours of 9.30 and 11 a.m. in the morning. Typically, most people are at work. No one's around. Uh, additionally, they're... Small box delivery trucks operate between the hours of 8.30 and 3 p.m. Monday through Friday, so it doesn't appear that there's any work that's going to be done on the weekends, and the hours of their function is going to be limited to the normal work day, so it shouldn't create any additional noise that you wouldn't hear. Wouldn't yeah, I actually... It. Sorry. No, no, sorry. I actually see this as being more compatible with the residential nature of the, this, the abutting uh, apartment complex. So I think this is a good thing. I agree. Yeah, you're going to have employees there for a shorter period of time. You're going to have much less employees there. You've got a lot that's going to be changing with this. So I think the noise and operation of ours was probably a lot more before with all the people with their cars and doing the work that they were doing. And we've heard that there's basically just four trucks that are coming in, picking their route and going out and maybe not even coming back the night off. So. The trucks do go home with the folks that are there, so we're not going to have a truck driving in at 1 a.m. to be parked at the facility because it didn't get its route done on time. All in favor of I being met? Does anybody have any conditions on special exemptions that they would like to impose on this? Yes, Mr. Longstaff. I have no conditions, and I don't mean to interrupt. I, I just would like, before the board con concludes their uh, decision making, there, I, I, I'm as we're going down through this, what I'm doing is I'm jotting down the comments to try to generate findings, fact, and conclusions of law. And on uh, the, the uh, letter C, um, the proposed use will not create public safety problems. I didn't really 
here is anything that that really generated a finding of fact that we can draw a conclusion from. And I guess what I'm trying to say is, is that I, I'm wondering if, you know, public safety to me in this case would be, is, and I think Ms. Shoup started to hit on it, is this product that's being stored more attractive? It's probably unlikely that people wanted to bust in and steal kitchen cabinets because they didn't have the wherewithal to load them and take them away. Well, it wouldn't have been the kitchen cabinets. It would have been the lumber. The lumber. All the tools. Yeah, yeah. all the tools. Because we had walnut frames and so Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, you got to step up. They can't hear you if you're talking. I apologize. I engaged him back there, and I should have asked him. This it would have been the lumber or tools rather than the finished cabinets. Exactly. The walnut lumber was 12 bucks a foot, a lineal foot, I mean, a, square, a, a board foot. Right. Uh, maple it was three or four dollars a board but what foot. I'm, I mean, what I'm trying to get at for the board's benefit is, are there is there going to be additional safety precautions taken with your product? Is it more, is it more readily, um, is it going to be a safety issue, people being attracted to taking that product maybe easy, more easily than the other product? Are there any additional precautions that you're going to take? Well, we sell potato chips, so I don't think... See, I'd steal those. Steal. <laughs> 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 they were good potato chips. And uh, kombucha products and things like that. There's not really a market out there for people reselling potato chips and kombucha. Well, Mr. Longstaff, if you want some comments for finding effects, on yeah, this, I'm just I think I can to, give you yeah. some. Yeah. I, I, I mean, you've got you've got less employees there, so there was more of a public safety problem because the employees were doing the work, correct, and they were mm -hmm. putting things together and stuff. So you're not going to be having them there now. You've got four people that are going to be going in there in vans and leaving very quickly once they get their routes done because they want to be able to get home in a reasonable time. And I don't think municipal fire is going to be any different than what's next door to them. I got they have, they have apartment complexes. You don't have all these machineries and tools being run by more than one person. So you're not going to be great fire hazard or police protection in existing neighborhoods. That's kind of why I asked the question if there was something in between there mm -hmm. that you haven't buried it off so someone just can't go through there if there's little kids playing and stuff. I'd like to see a little bit of a fence there if I had my say on it just to have if trucks are coming in and out it'd be nice to just have a section fence there so some little kid can't hop over the log and get into the way where the trucks and stuff, stuff are coming but you folks have seemingly dealt with the way that you've dealt with it now and there hasn't been any any accidents or anything but I don't know if that answers what you're looking the chemicals are all, also going to be less I mean well yeah and again it was more the public it was the, uh, the public safety problems I think the public safety problems so I think, are far less. I this. think, yeah, I think one of the issue, one of the pluses is that the, the property you're still going to be working there five days a week, I would presume. Yes. Yeah. So there's still going to be somebody on prem, one person on premises, as opposed to twelve to fifteen, which is one to you know one or two people opposed as versus twelve to fifteen potential risks of using power equipment mm -hmm. and and trucks loading and offloading and. I, I think there's definitely an okay, improvement. Good. That's a good angle. Less, less dangerous. The operation is less dangerous. Not that you had a bad safety record, I'm sure. Right, probably. but yeah, less dangerous. Is, is, additionally, is, I'll, I'll throw in as well the, um, the reduction in the cabinet making operation. You're generating less sawdust. You're generating less potential hazards for fire. Yeah. Are there others you need us to expound upon? No, nope, that, that's good. I just didn't have a like. I know you got a got blank it. there for one other one, so do we need to? Um, this one here? This the one above it, which is nothing. No, I've got that okay. right there. All right. Where were we? Uh, uh, you were, I think, a, about the conditions you were. Yes, are there any conditions anybody would like to impose? Like I said, my only thing for safety with the drivers, you got four drivers. Before it was employees, they knew where to park and stuff. Your drivers may not know what's going on there. They may be trying to get out of there really quick and stuff. If there was just something in that one little space, other than just that log for parking spaces, all it would require is like an eight-foot fence so Junior doesn't hop over the log and one of your vans can't see him and runs him over. That's the only thing I would like to see myself, and it's probably cost you about 50 bucks. Uh, yeah, we, we can put fences in there. Okay. Yeah, because otherwise yeah. I can just go right around it. There's a lot of... 
Yeah, I didn't know how much of a section there is there. But. Yeah, and maybe three or four sections, so it may be. Okay. Yep. If you're willing to do that, I'd be okay with it. It's 19 meters. Can you just come to the podium? Yeah. Just, just so we can get it on the record, sir. Yes. Yeah, we can do that. Okay, thank Probably you. We need to extend. I'd love to have it in front of the trash. Dumpster, <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Well, I'd like the dumpster to extend it beyond you know. that. <laughs> sure. Well, um, I yeah. guess. I'll uh, move to approve appeal number 2644 under the condition that the applicant installs a fence in the open area between his facility and the apartment complex. Well, how long is the fence going to well, be? I, I purpose. Because kids can go. They will go yeah, around. It's they're not going to go matter. Right, right around the stuff anyway. Unless you connect it to the building. I, I purposefully I mean, left. I don't think you need a fence. I purposely left off length and leave that to the determination of the applicant as they have, you know, if he sees that there's a spot where you can put a fence up, he can put it, it up. It seems like something you're willing to do anyways because you want to get the dumpster on the other side anyhow. Yeah, where, so. the, where you further dot is, it's like a jungle there anyway. Kids right. can't get through there. It's okay. prickle bushes. And, yeah. and that's what I figured. Just, I'm, my, I'm just looking for that open area that's completely open. I think it would be great if you improve if you added the fence, but I I don't feel it's necessary to make it a condition of approval. Okay. That's my opinion. You've had it on your you had it on your motion, so I'll, I would I'll, I would request it as the as I'll, an uh, amendment to your I'll, motion. I'll amend my emo I'll amend my motion and just say move to approve appeal number twenty six forty four as presented. I I want the fence. Second. You want the fence? Yes. Oh, okay. That's what I'm saying. saying you had it on your motion. He wants a vote on it. Sorry, I apologize. Yes. So let me retract, go back to my previous. So I move to approve appeal number 2644 under the condition the applicant installs a fence uh, in the area between his building and the adjacent apartment complex. The open area. Yes. The open area. All those in favor? Or is there a second? Oh, yeah. Sorry. Is there a second? Is anybody going to second? Someone has to second it so we can vote on it. Unless I don't agree with the fence. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I just don't feel There's that. no second, so the okay. motion dies. All right. Okay, so, the motion. so you need to do a new motion. Need another motion. I don't want to say it. I guess appeal, I uh, move to approve, I move to approve appeal number 2644 as presented. Second. I would still like to see you do it, even though it's not part of the appeal. <laughs> I think you folks would benefit from it too. So all those in favor, as presented, I'm going to oppose because I went to defense, so <laughs> it's four to one. You all set? Thank you. <laughs> all right. Next on our agenda is ordinance amendment proposal front yard setbacks on corner lots or lots bordered by more than one street. That was in all of your packets. And Mr. Longstaff, I believe you're going to go over that. Yes. Um, so it, it's kind of been on my radar screen for a while that, um, we, and, and I think the board will recognize, I think even last month there was a, a variance that came to you for a lot that had three frontages. And we've run into that many times. Mm -hmm. And since we incorporated the Higgins Beach amendments that finally said, hey, you can have a primary frontage where that maximum setback applies, but if you've got two frontages, you can designate a primary and a secondary with a little bit more <coughs> flexibility on that secondary side. In other words, it sort of gets treated differently. And um, our regular ordinance doesn't do that. It just says if you've got three frontages, you've got three front setbacks. And if it's 40 feet, tough luck. If it's 50 feet, even tougher luck. And sometimes that's sometimes that really hems people in. And really unfortunate if you happen to be in a floodplain or in a shoreline zone, because now you have to go for a, a, you know the standard hardship variance. And if it's just a simple addition, that modest addition you want to add to your house, it creates some hardships. So I. Um, I approached the, the uh, planning director, Jay Chase, about it. We had a discussion. He, he was very supportive of it because we've, I think we've seen how it does help down to Higgins Beach, how it can make a difference, make things easier, make it less taxing on the board to make approvals that would otherwise make sense. 
And so his suggestion was he felt the, the, the best approach would be for the zoning board uh, because you guys often are the, the ones that see these problems. They come to you for variances and limited reductions of yard size and, and practical difficulties. And so if I could garner your support for just exploring an amendment to the ordinance that would create some kind of relaxation for those properties that had more than one street frontage. We, we are not trying to suggest what that should be. We think that that's a discussion that needs to be had with the ordinance committee and with any recommendations from this board, as well as maybe, you know, maybe the other board's planning board what, or whatnot. But we feel that there needs to be a discussion and to see if the town has an appetite to do something about that. In preparation for that discussion and for your uh, information, I did a quick look around in the communities. And it's about 50-50. Some towns deal with it differently than we do. Some towns deal with it exactly the same. In fact, their language is exactly the same yeah. as our ordinance. And, and, and I know for a fact statewide, there are different communities. You know, communities deal with it differently. My hometown where I'm from used to deal with it uh, for any properties within 500 feet in either direction of that property, you could take the average front setback that was being used by existing structures. It might benefit you, it might not. <laughs> it might work against you, but mm -hmm. you had that ability. So that kind of go into those points where you say, is it in keeping with the character of the neighborhood? Well, if everybody in the neighborhood is 10 feet from the right of way, and you happen to be the unlucky guy with the, with, with the house that's set back, um, but not far enough, you're the odd man out when you, when you want to uh, do something with your property. So I, I did a quick check, as I say, that it was a mixed bag. I put some, some examples of what I found. This is certainly not exhaustive, and nor would I want to spend a whole lot of time do, doing an exhaustive search, but this just gives you a flavor. Some towns deal with it on a percentage basis. Sometimes, uh, some towns deal with it on an average, or some towns simply, similar to the Higgins Beach, give you a a setback, you know, you can go no closer than this. Normally you'd be 40 feet, you can go no closer than 20 feet, half, half the, the normal setback. So it's, it's all over the place. I think that discussion needs to be had if the zoning board has uh, an appetite to see, or to it, not even to see it change, but to explore a change. It may not result in a change. And certainly the final decision lies with the town council if they would approve whatever the ordinance committee based on recommendations from this board and others would come up with. It does need to be considered and looked into because we had the one property that had, what, two, if not three frontages a while back, and I don't know if that one's actually been even settled out yet. The one, Which one's that? I think there was one that we had. What area town is that one? I, I don't remember the exact location of it, but I know. Yeah, that was the long, one in Ju that was the one in July, right? Yeah, it had the yeah, long drive. Well, that, that was the three. last month. Yeah, yeah. no frontage. They wanted the That's deck. the one that came to mind to me. Yeah, because, sure. Yeah. Right. But, but I know we've had those. We've had others as well. Uh, there was a lady who wanted to put a handicap ramp on the side of her house, and she had a she was on a corner lot, and you know, and that, that impeded her ability to do that. She had to come for a variance for it rather than to say, designate, here's my primary frontage, here's a secondary frontage. I've seen, I know over the years, I've seen many where the neighboring properties were closer than what these people could get permission to do. And those are the ones that really sting when you're looking at your neighbor and he's here and he's here and you've got to be back here. Right. Those are the ones that really sting to me. And I think that's where you could look at uh, um, a number of different ways of doing it whereby nobody got an unfair advantage but if everybody else was up there, you would get the ability to get up there too. Yeah. I, if I could add, sure. um, so when I, when I reviewed this, I kind of looking through the different examples here, and I'll go right to a specific mm -hmm. point that you made in here. I really like um, the town of Westbrook's um, interpretation. The code enforcement officer may reduce the setback requirements for existing structures to that of the average of adjacent properties provided that no additional dwelling units are added. Um, I really like the wording of that, especially in, you know, if you're looking at Higgins Beach or a Pine Point area where a situation like this might occur, um, folks wouldn't be, I, I like to think folks wouldn't be objective to someone adding a back deck or a small little sunroom off the back of their house, but 
would certainly object if they wanted to put a dwelling unit or an accessory unit out there. I think anything that can make this job easier for the board <laughs> is definitely welcomed. <laughs> we have two people that are leaving, so you're going to have at least two, if not three people that are going to be coming on the board new. So I think looking at this right now is the perfect timing for it, and it will make people's jobs that serve on this board in the future much easier because they won't have to try to figure out what they're doing if something's actually done. Um, so I guess having having said that, I, I'm I'm not sure that I'm not sure how I feel feel about the Westbrook model, but um, I I don't like the way it's worded. I like what it gets to. I just yeah, like mm -hmm. the way it's worded. I, I agree. And and whatever we would develop, we would certainly pass it through uh, legal counsel to make sure that it was enforceable and not. Uh, setting us up for failure. And you'd bring it back to us, and, right? And we could bring it back to you as well. Yeah. I'd like to think that maybe it, it, as quickly as the next meeting we could bring back something, but I don't know if we can move I mean, that I, quickly. Well, we are going to be meeting with the town's lawyer at our, all, at our planning yeah. board and zoning board meeting. That could be something we bring up to council at that point if we decide tonight that we think yeah, it should be one. done. And I mean, we had two of them tonight. Right. Two corner properties yes. tonight. Yeah, you're correct. You know? They just and, both happened to be in Higgins, Higgins Beach. Beach. So they were already addressed. <laughs> and they work, exactly. They work, that works good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, the first one wasn't in Higgins Beach, though, if you're talking about the one with the curved frontage. But, right. But there's, a, there's an example. There's another one. I don't even know if that one would actually qualify. And that wasn't really a hardship. It was really based on the fact that they moved the house back because of ledge. They had plenty of room to be forward on the lot and would have allowed. But anyway, different deal. Um, so I guess what I'm looking for is, is some direction from the board or some, some uh, recommendation to go forward with exploring possible amendments to our ordinance to, um, to deal with multiple frontages in a different way than we currently do. Show of hands, all, in, fa agree. all in favor of exploring this and coming up with some recommendations maybe as soon as yeah. the next meeting? Yeah. I think it's unanimous. unanimous. Okay, yeah. very good. Thank you very much. I'll be sure to... Uh, I'll be sure to include you, uh, you know, in any, if, they, if they're seeking, or, or let me put it this way, if, as you think about this, uh, if something pops into your head and you see an, an example that I presented that you particularly like, like James, uh, Mr. Hebert just said he liked the Westbrook, if you, if you think about this and have any suggestions, please forward them to me. I will also come back to you, you know, and, and ask, but uh, be, in the meantime, feel free to forward me any suggestions or thoughts that you have because I'd like to have a, a good first discussion with the ordinance committee on this and bring your thoughts along at that time rather than to have them go in a totally different direction that wasn't something you guys were comfortable with and come back and you guys say, no, I don't like that. <laughs> but uh, so anyway, I'll put that out there and I appreciate your support for this and we'll see where it goes. Actually, one suggestion, if I may. Okay. Um, uh, in addition, I, I, I like the uh, provided that no additional dwelling units are added, however that's worded. Mm -hmm. Um, one also, one also, one additional uh, suggestion might be, is to provide a percentage limit that an expansion uh, in that sort of backyard would be. I, I'm just, I don't have a specific number out in the air, but I know we've used percentages before where you know you can't expand beyond 20% of the building footprint at, for X Y Z project you want to do. Maybe this is 5%. Maybe this is 10%. You know, it allows someone to build that back deck or build that small little sunroom that they want to have, but you know it keeps them from building a full size accessory unit out in their backyard or something, some something monstrous that would be a, a visible. Um, obstruction and take away from the character of the neighborhood. So I, I like the idea of you know eliminating dwelling units and accessory units from it, as well as potentially instituting a percentage build-out limit. Mm -hmm. I, I like that idea. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. And we do have two seats open currently on the board. We'd appreciate anybody that's interested uh, in volunteering. Actually, um, as yes. of the 18th of this month. Uh, the appointments committee should be appointing two new members. Two new members? Yeah. Okay. Well, as of December... You won't be the new guy anymore. We will, have two, <laughs> we will have two vacancies as of December to be filled as well. So if anybody is interested in joining the Zoning Board of Appeals, we'd welcome you to put an um, application in. You can drop that off with the town clerk, Tody Justice, and I believe she is looking at people that are looking to be on as of next year right now. So... If anybody's interested, would like to fill it up so that there aren't two seats come January that are empty like they are now. 
and also um, great meetings if people on the board I would recommend everybody go to the MMA meetings they're very informative they're very direct they tell us things we should and shouldn't be doing and things that maybe we need to look at a little bit differently mm -hmm. so it's a great meeting and it's a great knowledge base I know that was two other members were here were at that meeting I was also at that meeting and it was a good refresher for me but I think it helps out when you're trying to serve and look at the things that Maine Municipal is telling you because they've got great amounts of, of years and findings of doing all this and they're available to all of us that serve on the boards as well. And like I said, we do miss our Karen, <laughs> who has left us and moved on to a different position in another uh, town hall, I believe, and we wish her well in her future endeavors. And I'd also like to point out, uh, nice job tonight. Thank you for being here, Tracy. Yes, and, thank uh, you. Brian, both of you for taking on the extra duties. Really appreciate it. Brian was doing double duties. Well, not thank really. you for being here. <laughs> appreciate your support. Uh, Do we have any other comments? Just one, Mr. Chair, if I may, uh, reminder, uh, was mentioned earlier, August 21st, we do have Attorney Saucer coming. Uh, if you are planning on coming, or maybe if you're not planning on coming, one way or the other, let All me know. All five members have said they're coming. All five members have said they're coming. That's super. I just need to, I need to know because we're going to have some pizza. So <laughs> I want to make sure we ordered enough food. Everybody on this board is committed. And any, any dietary restrictions? Thank you, Karen. Any dietary restrictions we need to know about ahead of time? Let me know and we'll accommodate. No nuts. I'm allergic to vegetables. Um, <laughs> that's all I have. Do so I have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. All those in favor? Thank you. Have a nice night.